Hello Geometry students, welcome to the continuing series of videos on uh, circles, polygons, and polygons inside of circle, circles. And in this video we are going to um, discuss and prove a result relating to quadrilateral. So this is theorem 1010. It says a quadrilateral can be inscribed in a circle if and only if the angles, the opposite angles, are supplementary. Okay. So only if its opposite angles are supplementary. So in other words, let's say you had a circle. And let's call this circle Q, just so that we have something to reference. And let's say you put a quadrilateral of some sort in here. A, B, C, D. Okay. A, B, C, D. Then what it's saying is, Given this picture, given you have a, tr a, a quadrilateral inscribed inside of a circle, then two things must be true. The opposite angles have to be supplementary. So there are two sets of opposite angles. Angle A and angle C have to be equal to 180 degrees. And also angle D and angle B together have to equal 180 degrees. Okay? And this is not true of all po of all quadrilaterals. In quadrilaterals, it is possible for opposite angles to not add up to 3 to uh, 180 degrees. This is only true of quadrilaterals that can be inscribed or placed inside of a circle. Okay. So now uh, I'm going to prove this particular result. Okay, so I've drawn a better circle. This is a perfect circle drawn with a compass and uh, some generic quadrilateral using uh, a straight edge. And notice here, this is a generic quadrilateral. It's not a kite. It might look like it, but it's really not. It's not a trapezoid or anything like that. It's just a quadrilateral. The only thing that we know for sure is that it it is a quadrilateral that is inscribed inside of a circle. Okay. So we are going to prove this this result, and uh, I'm gonna. This picture is about to get very colorful here. So if you have colored pencils or markers, now would be certainly the time to use them. So I'm gonna start here by looking at angle A and the arc that it intercepts. So if you look at notice this picture that I'm going to just say that angle A uh, intercepts arc B, C, D. Okay, so this angle here angle A intercepts this arc here. Okay. And this is um this is just given in the picture. Okay. So this angle particular intercepts this arc. Okay. So then we can also say on the flip side of things, angle C intercepts arc B A or D A B. Angle C intercepts arc DAB. So C is this angle, it intercepts this arc here. Okay. Now From what we know previously, the measure of angle A is equal to one half the measure of arc BCD. And this was theorem 10.7. So A intercepts BCD. So A is equal to one half of BCD. And similarly, C is equal to one half of DAB by very much the same reason. Okay. So
so far we haven't been able to to get any numbers in here we have to somehow get 180 in here okay. well let's just do some substitution let's add the left side and add the right side so if I take a plus C I will get one half BCD plus one half DAB okay. and this is just substitution six now um, I'm going to factor out with a one half here So I'm, all I'm going to do here is factor out that one half. But wait a minute. Let's look at this uh, these two arcs again. Arc BCD is this red one here. Okay. And this time I'll highlight it. BCD is this red one right here. And DAB is the blue one over here. So if we add them both together, then you can see that it makes a full circle. So 7, B, C, B, C, D plus D, A, B equals 360. So now we can take this 360 and substitute it in here. So using step 6, we have A plus C is equal to 1 half. Okay, so I'm just taking this statement here and bringing it down. But instead of putting in BCD plus DAB, I can put in 360. And that gives 180. The measure of angle A plus the measure of angle C equals 180. Okay, and there you have it the proof is complete. So the proof here is just, the idea here is just to use the property of the inscribed angle and the intercepted arcs. Okay? And if you look at it uh, for, a ninth, for any quadrilateral, if it's inscribed, you end up with two arcs that come around and fill up the entire circle. Now the proof of part two is done the same, the same exact way, but the one slight change is you're going to use B and D instead of A and C. Okay, so uh, there you have it. This completes the proof and completes all the stuff that we talked about today, all the theorems today. If you are in Mr. Wen's class, we will talk about these examples of problems in, in our class. Uh, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.